I have everything under control. Thanks for offering. Thanks. You take care of yourself now. What do you mean? My wife's going to kill me when I tell her we'll need to bring another cow. Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamertag is iryani, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, -E and you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey what's up guys, it's Ryan and welcome to another episode of Modded Monday. We're on week number 122 now guys. I've picked out five new mods for this week that you guys can check out and perhaps add them to your load order if you find them interesting. So let's just jump straight into it. Starting off at our number five spot, we have the Truly Deadly Poisons mod. Now this mod improves all of the poisons to be more venomous towards the player and enemies. Poison is now a deadly force to be reckoned with and it can drastically turn the side of battle or make traps something to be truly avoided. Be sure to carry Cure Poison potions on you when you go exploring in ruins, and Alchemist builds are now useful late game. Now with this mod installed, all of the pre-made vanilla poisons have been modified to last minutes, and the damage has been adjusted accordingly. This even includes poisons that are spit at the player, such as the Frostbite Spiders. Now all of the player-made poisons from Alchemy have been adjusted by making them scale with your Alchemy level. At 100 Alchemy, they'll be more powerful than the pre-made ones and will last about the same amount of time. Now this mod may be small, but its impact in the game is actually huge. With these changes, it makes it so you actually have to use your Cure Poison potions because, let me ask you a question, have you ever actually used a cure poison potion? And how many times whenever you're exploring caves do you actually use a lot of the poisons that you have? If you're running an alchemy build, how many times do you just go and sell all your potions instead of actually using them? I myself, whenever I'm playing as an alchemist and going through my playthroughs, is I keep all my healing potions, the invisibility potions, and the cure disease potions. Pretty much all my other potions I sell off and I just play the game that way. But with this mod installed, it makes the game a lot more harder and a little bit more strategic as in how you have to plan out your poisons that you're using, and it makes them more powerful as well to use in battle, and now you have to be really careful because the enemies that use these poisons are actually very dangerous now. You can't just run straight up to a frostbite spider and still get hit and win the battle and just expect it all to be good from there and kind of like laugh off the poison. You'll actually have to use your cure poison potions and just have a little bit more strategy when it comes to those aspects. And that's what I really like in the mod and that's why it comes in at our number 5 spot, so I'd recommend downloading the Truly Deadly Poisons mod. Coming in at our number 4 spot, we have the Warrior Poet Powers. Now the mod page reads that this brings Elder Scrolls Online, Mass Effect, and Dragon Age-like powers and combos into Skyrim, encouraging fast-paced, in-depth, and rewarding gameplay for skilled players. There's 65 custom and 22 overhauled vanilla powers in this mod. The features of this mod include non-stop, smooth, and tactical action game experience, balanced with vanilla powers and benefit from respective skills and perks. It's fully compatible with Ordinator and other perk overhauls, and these are also mapped to the power section so you can use whatever spell you would like along with these ones. There are also lesser powers that have a 3 second cooldown, there's tons of buffs and debuffs, dozens if not hundreds of potential power combos, the powers in the mod also have multiple effects, they cost health, magicka, and stamina, or multiple attributes to make it balanced, the powers are highly conditional and flexible depending on the scenario that you're in, and they revolutionize play styles like the one-handed tank, a paladin, a two-handed berserker, dual wielding, knight blade, spell sword, archer, arcane archer, death knight, necromancer, destruction mage, and even a healer. How to actually acquire these powers is there's two different merchants that you can travel to. There's Ragnar the Warrior Poet who is in Dragon's Reach and Ophio the Warrior Poet who is located at High Hrothgar. Now I know whenever I was actually purchasing the powers I scrolled through the list relatively fast. That was so you guys could pause and actually read them all because I can't showcase all 65 custom and 22 overhauled powers in one video. That would take forever. So I'm going to showcase some of my favorites out of it and if you want to see what the other ones did you can download them on for yourself or just pause the video on the ones that you find interesting. Now the two spells and powers that stuck out the most to me and the ones that I liked the most was the Death Knight along with the Fade Step. The Fade Step power allows you to launch forward with a huge burst of speed that will actually last a pretty long time. It's way better than Whirlwind Sprint and you'll be able to just keep running really really fast. And Death Knight was another spell that I found extremely useful because you can cast it and the entire area of dead bodies that are around you become servants to you and they will fight for you in battle and I find that extremely useful and extremely badass as well because I just cleared out this entire robber's gorge and then I use it in all of the 
bandits are now on my side and part of my crew. So with this mod, you can have a whole bunch of different scenarios of different powers that you can have, and these are actually balanced into the game relatively nicely because they also cost health, magicka, or stamina, or different attributes to be sacrificed in order to cast these spells. As an example, the Death Knight power actually required stamina for me to use in order to summon all those people on my side. So this mod definitely does revolutionize playstyles that you can do in the game, and that's what I really like in the mod, and that's why it comes in at a number four spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading the Warrior Poet Powers mod. Coming in at our number three spot, we have Bogmort, Mud Monsters of Morthol. Now the mod page reads, watch your step. The swamp does not give up her dead. With this mod, the swamps of Morthol are now a dangerous place. Monsters emerge from the muck if you stray too close, and if you're splattered with their flesh, it'll be harder to escape them. Can you master their power for yourself? This mod features new Bogmorn enemies with over 16 different variants, a devastating cumulative effect as you get covered in their mud, ambushes scattered throughout the Morthal swamps, and Bogmart thrall followers that are created through ritual sacrifice. There's also new rusty weapons and the mire flesh ingredient. Now to uncover the secrets of the Bogmort and learn how to create a Bogmort thrall, simply go to the summoning stones and search for a knapsack, but be ready for a fight. Now you guys know I love whenever they add new creatures into the game and new enemies to fight, and that's definitely what this mod is, and it's extremely awesome because I didn't expect them to rise straight up out of the ground like they did. They just came up out of nowhere, and it's actually pretty intimidating and scary whenever you stumble across it for the first time, especially depending on how far you went in the playthrough and how powerful your character is. This could lead to a dangerous and devastating fight. And also with this mod being pretty small, coming in at 35.03 megabytes, it'll fit right alongside the other monster mods in your load order. And that's definitely why this mod comes in at our number three spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading the Bogmort Mud Monsters Morthal mod. Coming in at our number two spot, we have the Authentic Legion mod. Now the mod page reads that this mod adds armor for the Imperial Legion in the style of Oblivion, and has a combination of ancient and medieval styles. This armor replaces the vanilla game armor variants with the Scout armor, which is used in the Legion by the Archers and the Scouts, and made of a thick skin plate. Then there's the Infantry armor, which is a standard armor made of metal pieces, and it fits for each warrior with leather straps. Moving on, we have the Horseman's Armor, which is heavier armor used by the Riders and Captains, and then Legate's Armor, which is covered in silver and gold patterns, and is worn by Legates and high-ranking officers, as well as the Guards of the White Tower. And then we have the heavy armor of the Emperor's True Guards, and this armor goes to the best fighters of the Empire, who take all of the blows to protect the Emperor. And last but not least, we have the General's Armor, which is the most expensive and best version of Imperial Armor, and is worn by General Tullius himself. Some of the other minor changes that come along with this mod is the Guards of Solitude now wear the alternate steel boots and gauntlets to look like the old Imperial ones. Imperial officers' swords and shields have been changed. The Imperial mages are also equipped with light Imperial gauntlets. And General Carius over in Solstheim also wears the set of Imperial General's armor. The Imperial military camps now have some of the awesome Imperial gear on display. And Horses of the Legion now have an Imperial saddle. Now I know I just recently covered an Imperial armor mod, but this one is made by Nordwar UA. In my opinion, Nordwar UA has some of the best overhauls when it comes to armor overhauls, and seeing their take on the Legion armor from Oblivion, which is also a game that I love and have grown up playing, I just really love how it's implemented into Skyrim almost seamlessly now. And that's definitely why this mod comes in at our number two spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading the Authentic Legion mod. Coming in at our number one spot, we have a huge magical overhaul mod called Mysticism. Mysticism is a comprehensive magic overhaul that adds over 200 meticulously balanced spells into the game. These spells are designed to feel like they belong in the world of Skyrim both mechanically and aesthetically. You can purchase them from vendors, loot from dungeons, or find them hand-placed in carefully chosen locations throughout the world. Many of these spells reintroduce magical archetypes from previous games, or expand on new magical archetypes introduced in Skyrim. In addition to adding new spells, Mysticism also heavily reworks a number of vanilla spells by adding new spells and rebalancing existing spells as part of the same project. It's also able to offer us a coherent and balanced magical experience throughout the early, middle, and late game. The features of this mod include balance adjustments to the vanilla spells, over 200 new spells that have been added to the world, vendor tweaks to add flavor and enhance roleplay, rare spells hand placed throughout the world, dozens of balance adjustments and bug fixes for vanilla scrolls, almost entirely scriptless and no impact on performance, creative use of vanilla assets for high quality and visually interesting effects, and a complete rework of master spells that significantly increase Increase their usefulness. Now with how large this mod actually is and how much ground this actually covers, I'm going to stick to the screenshots from the mod page to actually provide you with the information that you need here. I'm going to be giving you guys the screenshots of the spells that have been added into the game for each of these skill trees that have been listed here, while giving you guys a brief description of what the overhauls of these skill trees actually do. 
When it comes to Conjuration, this allows the summoning of powerful creatures from the Plains of Oblivion. Unfortunately, in Vanilla Skyrim, it seems that Oblivion only had two or three creatures in it. The variety of available summons have greatly expanded with Mysticism, allowing the player more options both mechanically and aesthetically. In addition, Conjuration has received several new Unity spells to help manage summons, and bound weapons are now viable throughout the game. When it comes to Destruction, this is a skill tree that is the default choice for mages who wish to deal ranged damage. Unfortunately, in Vanilla Skyrim, the damage dealt by Destruction tapers off very early, and the school is unsatisfying to use in the late game. Mysticism adds a ton of new Destruction spells, especially to the Master level, allowing destruction to scale into the late game without massively interrupting the balance of the early and middle game. It also adds new spells that drain health, magicka, and stamina, and increase the utility of destruction magic for other playstyles. Next up we have Illusion, which in Vanilla Skyrim, Illusion is limited to Muffle, Invisibility, and a few crowd control spells that are barely really useful in any means. Mysticism greatly expands Illusion's options for crowd control, both by returning Paralysis to Illusion and adding new archetypes such as Silence and Command. In addition, it adds several new types of spells such as Charm, Reflection, Sanctuary, and Quicksilver. Moving on to Alteration, which in the vanilla game of Skyrim, Alteration is the primary school for defensive magic, with a little utility on the side. Mysticism significantly increases the defensive potential of Alteration and adds dozens of new utility options. In addition, Mysticism also adds several new options to control or debuff enemies, making Alteration the ultimate support school for just about every playstyle. Then we have Restoration, which in the original game, Restoration is a one-dimensional school that allows the player to instantly restore large amounts of health for very little magicka. Mysticism replaces all fire and forget healing spells with concentration spells. This greatly increases the opportunity cost of on-demand healing. In return, Mysticism adds several new tools to Restoration's magic kit, such as spells that regenerate health over time, and spells that mitigate incoming damage. Restoration is now more powerful than ever, but it privileges more careful preparation instead of just spamming massive instant cast heal spells. In addition, turn undead spells have been significantly improved, and sun spells have been greatly expanded. There's also a new line of poison spells that allow restoration mages to harm living things as effectively as any destruction mage. Now I really love how this mod is actually compatible with a bunch of the other overhauls such as Ordinator and Apocalypse. With Apocalypse and this mod combined together, you will have some of the most expansive overhauls of magic that you can even possibly possibly think of. And with all of these mods combined, as well as being small coming in at 1.02 megabytes, it's definitely a mod that is going to stay on my load order. And that's why this mod comes in at a number one spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading the Mysticism Magic Overhaul mod. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the Top 5 Skyrim Mods of the Week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new. It really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future Top 5 Mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below, or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description, and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions through there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporter. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I will talk to you guys later.